What you guys up to today? Uh, Super Gang, Vape Nash. What, you guys doing Subaru things? I'm getting gearbox breaking. Yeah, you guys. That's me. You guys really doing Subaru things? Yeah. Can I see? Yeah. Let's, Let's go. go. Oh, yeah. Help us shoot it? Let's go. Are you, are you have a filmer? Dude, you Listen, a filmer I got this box. Look at <laughs> Right? Damn. I picked up this box from Harbor Freight Damn. and it came with a jolly. It came, oh, you came in the box? You came with a box. Man. They said, what's in the box? What's in the box? What's in the box? It's a jolly's in the box. Jolly in the box. It's a jolly in the box. Interesting setting, right? We're at Hoonigan. This is Ron. If you don't know Ron, he's Ron Carr. Originally from Zero to Sixty Magazine with Brian Scotto, and then him and Brian jumped into the whole Hoonigan thing, and now he's doing all that. But the one thing you might not know about Ron is that Ron is heavily into rally. Yes. Maybe some people know, but Ron's heavily into rally. I'm getting involved in rally. <laughs> That's not a rally car. That's not my rally car. Hey, untrue. Anything's a rally car if you're brave enough. CRV is actually, if I was gonna build a front wheel drive like mini SUV, yep. it would be, that would be the My car. first rally, I'm super embarrassed to say this, is gonna be terrible. My first rally I co drove was in Scion XD. The shoebox. The shoebox. No, 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 not the box. That's the XB. This oh. was the XD. It was kind of in between the two. Okay. It looked dumb. Not a TC. It looked really dumb. No. I think I'm picturing a TC. But look, Scion, Scion footed the bill. You know, uh, we did, that was a project we did with the magazine. I co-drove for for Van Christie Classic. No, that was my second go. Okay. My first was a Mazda Speed Three, and it set on fire. That sounds like a good time. My first time. <laughs> my first time in a rally car it set on fire. Yeah. Uh, but now, there's some Hoonigan stuff that we did. Uh, really, I just convinced Hoonigan to buy a rally car. Yeah, you swindled? I mean, I don't persuaded? like that Persuaded? I don't like that, I wouldn't use it. Yeah, persuaded. Creatively persuaded Hoonigan to get a rally car. We really need Fondled. One. Just shelve the car. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! So, you know we're building the WRX. Obviously, you're watching the WRX build series. I told Ron about this idea that I had. He was like, he was like, oh, you've been watching Ruts on Guts, That's or Ruts and Guts, rather Ruts on Guts. You've been watching Ruts on Guts. So I told Ron about what I wanted to do. Ron goes, hey, I, so for a while, I've actually been bugging you to get a Subaru. So I got yes. mine, and then I was like, Ron, get a Subaru. You get a send Subaru. me get listings Subaru. all the time. Yeah. I would send them stuff. Then one day, not from Ron, actually from our buddy, uh, Heavy Metal, What's his name? Bucky Lasik. No. Oh. He's our decision. John Kramer. John, Mr. John Kramer. Then, through John Kramer, I find out that Ron got a hold of a Subaru without telling me. So I was like, hey, I heard you join the group. And he's like, what are you talking about? I was like, I heard you got a Subaru. And he's like, oh, yeah, dude. I forgot to tell you. <laughs> like, you scumbag. <laughs> so now we're here to check out Ron's ride, dude. Look at this thing. Can you just take a second? to look at this absolute gem, <laughs> this beautiful history sample. What is the story behind this? Because it's obviously beat up, it's already built. Where did you get it from? Uh, I got it from a race team called ODD Racing out of Denver. Okay. Uh, ODD is OGs. They've been in the game for a while. They've been racing Rally America a long, long time. Ed McNally, he turns wrenches over there. He was an instructor at Team O'Neill. He's done rallies yeah, himself really O'Neal. fast behind the wheel. Um, and he was wrenching on this thing. And through people, talking to some people, talking to other people, I was like, Ed, I need a rally car for a thing that I can't tell you about yet. But we needed a rally car. Something yeah. with a cage, a handbrake, all-wheel drive, and a skip plate. This had all those things. And I was like, it's for sale. This thing, uh, it did 10 seasons in Rally America. 10 seasons? 10 seasons, yeah. Holy crap. Yeah. That, that's kind of a big deal because if you don't know, rally cars are essentially, the entire car is disposable. Yeah, your, your whole car is a consumable. And they get swapped out fairly often because people wreck them? Uh, yes and no. It really depends. Like, 
The, the crazy thing about a rally car, you can wreck it pretty good and then still bring it back. Huh. So a lot of the cars you see, yeah, they've probably been wrecked a bunch of times and you replace panels and everything, but the chassis itself, like the cages are super, super built to spec for safety. So when your chassis is that well built, you're not replacing whole cars a lot. 10 seasons, that's, that's a... That's a bit more. It that's might be more. It might be more. There's like all different. You can still see remnants of like other old vinyl that used to be on yellow, this thing. Yellow, looks like. Yeah, a little bit of yellow, different color bumpers. Uh, so this. So it's got 10 seasons. This is an STI. Yes. This is. Stock motor. Super. Can we look under here? STI, yeah. And the class that this runs in. Uh, I don't. To be completely honest with you, I don't know what the class is called now, but it used to be called SP. Okay. Which is kind of like Group N is the same thing. Essentially what it is, is a stock STI, stock bottom end, you can't modify anything on the block, nothing like that. You can do a tune, you put a restrictor on, and a downpipe, and an intake. That's about all you can really do to the motor. That's Everything else is safety or handling. That sounds boring. It Relative does. to like drifting. It does. But the wild thing about rally is like, 300 horsepower in the woods at all-wheel drive is insane. Gets really fast, really quick. That's like Pro 2. Yeah. It, 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 it's funny because 300 doesn't sound like a lot of power at all. No. But realize that like in any other motorsport, if you go off, like, yeah, maybe you, you tap a wall, you hit right. a wall, or you go infield or whatever. Here, if you go off... You even, die! Even, you die! Even <laughs> off line a little bit, you're yeah. center punching a tree. Yeah, trees don't move. They don't move. And you're overall, like, some of them, like, you're going flat out, like, 100 plus miles an hour on gravel yeah. with trees on either side of you. So there's a learning curve and, like, a process to get up to. In a safe manner. In a safe manner. So yeah. this, like, so this, you couldn't just go jump into a rally race with this car. Right. Because right. you have to, from my understanding, is you have to run a season or two of NA. You have to run at least aspirated. one season of NA all-wheel drive okay. or turbo or NA two-wheel drive, front or rear. Gotcha. Yeah, they want you to start out with that before you start going in. Jumping into something like this. Yeah, exactly. So, pretty much bone stock drivetrain. You have the cool six-speed in there. Um, some cooling stuff, it looks like, some Mishimoto goodies yep yep yeah you want to keep her cool you got some gnarly suspension we'll get into that okay we'll get into that for sure but it's otherwise a, like transmission engine diff all that stuff stock stock it's a replated rear in the diff but uh other than that, that like it's really yeah you just stack the shims you yeah. stack the shims different so a different kind of lockup but that's the benefit of an sti is like from the factory they were made to be homologated for the gearbox for the diffs, for the motor. Okay. So really, like, these cars from the factory had a lot of the stuff that you need to you, shred on gravel. You know, it's an interesting thing that I found out is that the brake lines are not underneath the car. The fuel lines are not underneath the car. Everything is inside the car. It's making it hard right now. Yeah. And this is Jolly telling us that we're being way too boring. No. <laughs> gotcha. This is your turn. I have to shoot Kyle's car. Oh, okay. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Jolly. Yep. So it's an SCI stock drive train. Yep. What yeah. about the, the really fun part, the party pieces start coming in here. So on a rally car, you're gonna wanna run a rally tire and yeah. all of those are 15 inch fitment. Are those some, are those some black rhinos? Those some black rhinos, did you my just friend. Did you just get those? I just got them. Dude, I just got them. welcome. I had to, the second you told me you're running black rhinos, I was like, dude, I gotta put this order in right now. Yeah. So what we have here is the black rhino boxer, obviously, Yeah. Subaru. Uh, honestly, man, like, this wheel's kind of sick. It has that, like, old-school Subaru, like, WRC gold vibe. Yeah. But yeah, you got 15-inch wheels. You have, like, proper Cooper Rally tires with all the ribbing. They got Kevlar side Oh, uh, Cooper. That's interesting, because these Coopers and, like, drifting wasn't ever, like, a good yeah, name to Yeah, and I wouldn't say that, like, they're the standard or anything. Of like that, Rally. They do make Rally tires, and... You'll go through a lot of them, so like tire conservation and usage. Sometimes yeah. a tire may not have as much grip, but it's more durable. Yeah. So you know you, you would get not as fast through a stage, but it's better. You than can make it through the, the stage, yeah, right? Exactly. Um, AP brakes underneath. Pretty um, clean. Some rotors. It looks like yeah, in there. Yeah. Floating rotor. But the real party piece. It's kind of hard to see, 
is the Riger suspension. Oh, yeah. Oh, there, there it is. Focus. Yeah, yeah. Those are what? Remote right? reservoir. They're, they're pricey. How much are those? I would say, I want to say like a set of Rigers is like 10 Gs. Oh, my God. So these are super long travel, about as much travel as a Ford Raptor, but on an STI. In a, yeah, in which here. is not very the high damping floor. is wild. I mean, we've jumped this car for a test that we did previously. Yeah. And uh, our man Pastrana did the test, and it landed. <laughs> what a blessing. Said, this thing lands damn near as good as my comp car. Wow. Yeah. That's impressive. It is. So it's funny because you see these things and it's super beat up and it's dirty and it's old and you got like all this, like the sill gets beat up and everything. But underneath, the bones of it are really, really good. Like yeah. proper, proper car. Which looks, we were just talking off camera, making this car look good again is like the easy part. Exactly. Right? Exactly. The hard part is... Getting the suspension dialed, doing all the fabrication, doing yep. the motor stuff, doing the drivetrain getting stuff. Getting your logbook to cage, that's a really big one. So we got a roll cage in here. We even have like the uh, the trip meter. Look at that little What the thing. hell? Yeah. What does that do? So on a rally when your co-driver, okay, you finish a stage. Right. Because a rally is just a collection of stage roads. Okay. And you drive on public roads from one stage to the next. Okay. So you start your rally, let's say in city center, and then you drive on public streets from there to the first stage, go really fast on the stage, finish that, go to the next. But you can't do iPhone nav, you don't have like a nav system. You have a co-driver. That co-driver has a book, and that book has what's called tulip notes. Tulip notes are literally like, take a right turn in 3.2 miles. Mm. And then in 4.5 miles after that, take a left on this road. And so this trip meter right here. Does that calculate your mileage? Yep. It, it's plugged into the speedometer. It, it calculates all your mileage. You could plug in like, so when you're racing, the co-driver just has his notes and you're going through the stage real fast and everything. So you're flipped in. And then the second you go in the transit mode, he flips that out, punches in how much to the next spot. That way... When you might get lost in the woods somewhere, like yeah. it's really remote locations, he knows, ah, shit, we've gone X amount of miles. Like, we're too far. You won't make it to the next stage in so the right a, time. You essentially just have a human navigation a human who is paying attention to everything yeah. so that you yeah. can just drive. And he sees you can plug in, like, you know you have uh, X amount of fuel. And mm. so you need to go to refuel after that. You can't just, I mean, you probably could fill up at a gas station, but... You only have a certain amount of time to make it from one stage to the next. You don't want to be late because that takes away from your main time. Yeah. That's a lot of shit. That's a lot of shit to figure out, dude. I don't That's why co-drivers are sick. That's a scary seat to be in. Get yourself a sick co-driver. They do all the math. They do all the directions. They do all the planning. They do (laughs) all the really important shit. That way, the person in the left seat just does the driving. It's like a secretary. It really is. The The co-driver is the the most important thing about a rally car you got to trust them you got to trust their math i've seen rallies where somebody's winning straight up like going really fast and winning and the co-driver did a mistake on the time card oh and they lost a minute damn overall because they put the wrong time now okay so now that you're like explaining all this to me now i understand why you when i hit you up like hey ron be my co-driver you're like nah. <laughs> no i was like nah dude <laughs> i'm horrible at math yeah no i'm terrible at it too so i wouldn't be a good one either another funny thing to check out so like you said earlier rally cars like the body is a consumable yeah so if you see here we got high density plastic on the rockers mm-hmm. because this is just getting sandblasted 24 7 there's even a plate welded in here because from the front tires you just get gravel just machine gunning all Back this. Here. So you got an extra plate here, high density plastic. All that's happening to the bottom of the car too. Even in here, check out the wheel well. Look at that. It's like somebody took oh my like God. a Gatlin gun of BBs. That's and just that's, gravel, man. That's just gravel. Yeah, that's what it does. Looks like a uh never mind, I'll have to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> and then uh, uh you got different spots, so this, you put your cordless impact Hey, that's in. a DeWalt. That's a DeWalt, man. That's pretty cool. It's like a little gun holster. Yeah. Ah. yeah you put your cordless impact in there, so when you do get a flat on stage boom. or on transit, boom, open the door, pop it out. You got your uh, sill stands right here. Yeah, I so want to put you, those in mine. Usually you'll have a jack that's just a pin, mm-hmm. and like it looks like a high lift jack with a pin in it. You just stick that in there, bop, bop, bop. Yeah, it's got that rotary thing on Change it. Change the tire, <laughs> boom, spare. 
Uh, you got your helmet bag. So when you go from regular mode to transit, you take your helmet off, pop it back here. Just throw it in the back real quick. Relax a little bit, listen to some tunes. I'm just kidding, it doesn't have a radio. <laughs> uh, back here, you got spare tire. This isn't really organized in like a rally. No, no, no. Right you now, literally got this for testing. Yep. And then it literally came from there straight yep. here and haven't so touched it. we got a whole it. lot of reprep to do and everything. But you could still see some of the signs. you got the first aid kit right here. you got the emergency uh, triangles. Um, this, there is a mounting plate here for a, a toolbox. Oh, okay. So just random, like, some guys like to carry around, like, maybe a tie rod or something like yeah, that. Yeah, extra so parts. That could either end your rally or you lose 20 minutes, but you still finish. pop a new tie rod in and you finish. Yeah, it's not a DNF. And the other thing about rally is, like, you never know. That might happen to someone else, too. Uh -huh. So you fix your tie rod. You lost 15. Somebody else loses 30. All of a sudden, you're ahead of them. Yeah, you're winning them. now. So it's, uh, it's as much a speed game as it is a survival game. So this is cool. You can see all the brake lines that are yep. coming in. Brakes, um, fuel. Yep, fuel stuff. lines coming off the back there. That's pretty clean. Got a fuel filter inside the car. See, that's, like, that's super weird to me because in FD... Mm -hmm. That's a big no-no. Huge no-no. Yep. Yep. Um, just totally different styles. Completely different, different way to different way to protect stuff. Different way to keep it. Completely different. So you got one thing I did notice actually that I actually admired was the exhaust coming out the back. Oh, it's, yeah, it's tucked up in under, and it's uh, yeah. Once again, just gravel rash, yeah. hard landings. You land a little back heavy. Yeah. This keeps the exhaust up and away from anything else that may be going on. This is pretty cool down here because you got, it looks like some white line bars in there, some control arms from white line. Yep. Yeah, um, you got some stronger adjustable arms and honestly, a lot of times, that's like, it's just easier to get something aftermarket than it is to find an OEM replacement. And yeah. It's a little stronger. Yeah, and then yeah. some, uh, some, uh, looks like guards on your trailing arms as well. Yep. Yeah, in the UK, they call those horror flaps. Horror I have flaps? No idea why. Horror or horror? Horror. horror. Okay, so horror. like scary movie flaps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, not um, lizard. That, not that lizard. protects the bottom side of your control arms from just getting buzzed down. Completely. Yeah, well, it's crazy. You don't really think about how gnarly gravel is and how impactful it is yeah. underneath your chassis. So here we go, the cockpit. This is where the magic happens. We got, we got, a, we got a suede liner, bud. That's super Look at clean. That. Yeah. This is dope. I like that it's all cut out and flattened, but you still maintain yeah. like the comfort. Because I'm sure between stages, you're like hot in the car, 100 roll the window down, and dusty. Yeah, yeah, that's bad. So you got a pedal assembly. Yep. And possibly pocket. one of the most important things you could do in the rally car is when you build it, when you reprep, when you do anything, you got to seal off every single exposed chassis hole that you can imagine. Because, and this has happened to me before, the, the Scion build that we did. Yeah. We went to the shakedown stage on yeah. our first rally. And maybe a quarter mile in, couldn't see inside the car. Because it, it just got dust. So out. much dirt and dust. You have to plug every single hole this oh. thing has before you hit the car. <laughs> yep. The, that does not sound fun at all. <laughs> that, that, that sounds like a, a fun job sounds for someone else. Sounds miserable. Yeah, I'll get on the other side. So you got, okay. So it looks like you got, obviously, a quick disconnect, steering wheel. You got yep. a handbrake. A handbrake that Look. looks like, I feel like before they sold this thing, there might have been a better handbrake in there. Maybe they just kind of like. I think that's a jack handle. <laughs> oh, I can see it. Yep. I but can see the cool it. thing is you got this little switch up here, which is the center diff disconnect. So just like when you pull up on a handbrake normally okay. in one of these, yeah. it disconnects the center diff. So it could lock the rear. It doesn't bog down the front. Oh, that's interesting. So my WRX doesn't have that. Right, correct. So yeah, when I pull the handbrake, a, it you, slows down all four. Yep, exactly. Which is why I said my handbrake doesn't work. Yep. It doesn't exactly, not work. It works it's great. It's just getting overpowered by everything else. Right. Which it still kind of works if you load the front end of the car. Yep. It'll still lock up the rear and, yeah, and yeah, send yeah. it into a spin, but... The drive line isn't really. It's not right. this. Yeah, exactly. So uh, this thing handbrakes like a charm. So you have to push that button in. Yep, it helps to pull it the just, handbrake. It helps on rotating. Why not? Uh, in what scenario would you not need that button pushed in? I'm glad you asked. None. I'm glad you asked. No, there is. Oh. When you're launching. Oh. So when you when you launch, 
in a car and you want to build some boost, right? You're pulled back on the handbrake. Okay. And you're keeping the diff engaged because if you were to load up the clutch on a launch okay. and push this in, you'd be doing a front wheel drive burnout. Okay. You know? So when you don't have that pushed in, you're actually keeping all four locked so you can so load you're drag up, and brake, or you're dragging clutch and all and that, yep. and then releasing. Oh, okay. Cause, yeah, because I'm thinking, why not just put that on like some type of you could switch system that, where it's that, being connected? The opposite way is what you'll see a lot more. So like in Ken's car, he also has a red button on top. I've seen But that. his red button is just for launch. So it's the opposite scenario of this. His oh. red button overrides that. Yeah. So his normal handbrake pull hits a micro switch, disconnects center diff. He doesn't have to think about it. He just goes, pulls, disconnect everything. The only time he pushes down is when he's launching to keep all four locked. See, I'd rather go that way yeah. than this That's way. That's the way to go. It's just a little harder. You just, to yeah, this is just, there's a lot of thought that goes into this. Yep. And when you're in the heat of the moment, stuff happens. Yep. So gangster, you have you got the handbrake, you got diff control. Stuff? Okay. Center diff, you could go locked, you could go active, any of that stuff. Uh, power button right here. Battery's dead. So, get this that power button out. for the whole car. Yep. Copy. And then the magic button. The magic button. ALS. Oh, anti lag. Anti lag. Ooh, that's a sounds... mild system on here because anti lag likes to eat up turbos. Yeah. Uh, but it still it helps a lot. And this is a factory turbo, so you, it, you, it can't handle too much. Yeah. It, I mean, it can handle mild anti lag. And then uh, it's funny, like in Group N, especially, like especially over in Europe. You could tell the faster guys, mm -hmm. their turbos last longer mm -hmm. because they're on the throttle more. Anti lag is only on when you're when you lift. Mm -hmm. So you hear pops, you hear everything. That's like explosions going on and shit. I got you. When you're more on throttle, you get less of those EGTs building up. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. That's pretty sick. So six speeds in here. You got manual brakes, which is huge because well, essentially the way your brake system works is you'll build boost in your brake system which is vacuum uh and you do not build vacuum on throttle and a lot of the times in rally you're braking and throttling at the same time foot braking, yeah. so you'll run out of boost which i did in my wrx and i was like oh i was like that's, that's why, why they go manual, manual brakes, brakes. Yes, first sir. i figured out why you guys left foot brake yep. when i was driving because i was like this thing won't turn yep it's had to get a little left foot brake that helps, yeah. amazing it's like a rudder in, in like uh in like a boat so like really you literally cool. have to put weight on it to get that rudder to go into the water yep. in in a sense like the front of the car dives into the dirt and then it wants to turn yep so you use that as like a yeah, as like a pivot a corner, like there's kind of, you'll you'll kind of see two kinds of rally drivers there's ones that kind of maintain they do maintenance through the corner uh-huh um they'll kind of you know be figuring stuff out like on entry bobbly. through it and be smooth out and then there's ones that just chuck the shit in uh, on every corner. Figure it out after. Just figure it out after. Yeah, I like that stuff. And <laughs> left foot braking is is that figuring out. That's mm. like your trim. You know, you, you pitch it in, you get it loaded up on the brakes, let off a little bit of throttle, pitch in, and then kind of maintain on yeah. the throttle. Yeah, so if you put a manual system in your car, you never run out of the brake boosting. It's always the same all the time, on or off throttle. Uh, interesting to get used to because I have one in the race car, yep. but I think a lot better than oh, a vacuum-assisted sure. sure. system. It's funny. You'll get in a street car after one of these, and you just hit the <laughs> dashboard. Yeah, yeah. Dude. But it's so much more consistent to drive on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah this is this is really good feeling. I actually got a hold of a Tilton assembly that we'll be putting in my car. So. Ooh, look at yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, like I said... Like I told you guys, I'll start a night, I'll start a project and be like, it's just gonna be this like basic setup, babe. Don't worry about it. And the next thing you know, tilt and pedal assembly, hopefully a roll cage similar to this thing. This is beautiful. So this is like not only a six point cage, this goes beyond because it goes up to the dash as well. You guys don't have tire intrusion bars like oh I, no. I suppose you No, that goes up. So it's not for the front tire coming in. Fully caged, X X is everywhere in the hoop in the back and in the ceiling a bunch of like you get your hail mary looks like you had mid stays back here yeah a couple mid stay bars a lot of like 
Very, very. Just a ton of rollover safety and side impact safety. Well, and it's just crazy because it's not drifting. It's not like, oh, you need a little four point or a six point. Yeah. It's like, oh, no, you full, need everything. Yeah. And you, you don't want to get submarined or anything like that. Yeah, submarine, for those of you who are interested in Googling it, you can Google submarine car crashes. They're pretty scary. They're very scary. scary stuff. And when you just have like a four point harness, that's a very real thing. That yeah, happen. this will stop you from submarining. Yeah. So two head containment seats. Mm -hmm. Some Sparco. Those are uh, I don't know anymore. They they might not be required, but it's like it's a really good idea to have. Them. Yeah, if you don't have this, then you're hitting this bar. Exactly. And if you put these on there, that'll help. But that's still really hard, and this is a lot softer, and it kind of gives too. This is a cool thing. Yeah. Side impacts and rolls are very common in rally, more yeah. so than like backing it into something or hitting something head on. Yeah. Yeah. It's. Rally, I have a lot of respect for rally car drivers. I think I probably have the most respect for rally out of all of the disciplines. Um, and then probably like the Baja 1000 dudes who are flying through stuff. It's a similar idea. You're listening to someone else's notes. You're trusting in your co-driver. You're out in the elements. like AKA terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Terrifying. So here's the fun part. Now that you have this car... We've been kind of talking back and forth. We haven't solidified it yet exactly, completely, 100%. But we want to go do some driving this year together. Absolutely. Seat time is king. Seat time is everything. Everything. So now that you have a car, what is your, like your what's like your goal with it? Just to drive it? First things first, absolutely want to take it to grid life. I want to drive it there. Uh, maybe Glen Helen. Take it to a couple of places where you just see like what it still needs, how it does on dirt, mm -hmm. what breaks, because you don't want to you don't want to find out your weak points on stage. Because when you're going to a rally, I mean, you're hauling out super far. It's a lot of driving. You don't want your rally to be ruined by some dumb thing right. that you find out. So lots of shaking down. I might go and visit you. I know yes. you got some roads. Yes, I want to go back. So there's one road that's right down the street from the house. Yep. I really that's like my stomping ground, my testing ground, which is really funny. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it. I had a stomping ground and drifting that was down the street from the house. It was a parking lot that I learned how to drift in. And now I essentially have a little bit of a rally gravel road down the street from the house that I get to learn how to drive in the dirt in. So nice. I want to do the same thing as you. I want to go to Glen Hill and Antelope Valley, I think. And then also I want to do the Grid Life Rally Bracket. Grid Life Rally Bracket. Huge super, inspiration super to why I wanted to do oh, really? the car. Yeah, it I was watched. super fun. Shout out to Texas Day Texas for setting Dave. that up. Running the whole thing, giving us a car to run. Yeah. Um, Texas Day might be prepping this thing because really, like, you want someone with rally experience to at least Sherpa you through these things. Yeah. The community's sick. They just, the community wants more people in rally. So find yourself someone that can walk you through, learn from their mistakes, don't learn them on stage, and uh, <laughs> yeah, you'll have a good time. Yeah, this thing's sick. I can't wait to do some driving with you. I'm so glad that this happened. Me too. Miraculously, this because is like, this is like 2006 X Games, Colin McRae, Ken Block, Travis dude, Pastrana. Like that's the look. Man. I watched all of it. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. freaking it's love a life it. Dream. This is my life dream. It's here. It happened. It's here. <laughs> that's dope. Well, thank you, Ron, for yeah, uh, being willing to grace the channel with your presence. Oh, and I'm excited to see what kind of trouble the two of us could get into. All kinds of trouble. Because it's happening. This thing first quarter. Oh my god, don't say that. <laughs> Alright boys, as always, thanks for watching and stay safe.